In order to set up a UiPath Automation Cloud account, go to cloud.uipath.com. As you can see, UiPath allows authentication using one of these accounts, Google, Microsoft, or LinkedIn, so that you don't have to remember another password. Alternatively, you can use any other email account, such as your company email address, with this continue with email option. But before we attempt to log in, first we need to sign up for an account. So click sign up. And here you can see the different sign up options. I will use my Google account, but feel free to choose whichever you like. I'll enter my Gmail address and password. For the organization name, I'll enter personal. I'll select the country. Confirm and click continue. And here you go. My personal UiPath Automation Cloud instance is ready and we are on the home page. You can also see that it has already allocated the licenses for two attended robots, one unattended robot, and one testing robot. The testing robot is part of UiPath's test automation suite and we will not be covering test automation in this course. Now under orchestrator services, it says create new. But if I simply refresh this page, I can see my orchestrator instance here. So it was in fact ready and we didn't have to create a new one, but we just had to refresh the page for it to appear. Now the orchestrator itself is a different site which you can access by clicking on this link. We will access that when we discuss about orchestrator in the later videos. For now, let's take a look at the other options. If I click on the Studios tab, I can see the different Studio licenses. Now you might be wondering why we only have two Studio Pro licenses and no license for Studio or Studio X. Well, actually you can use the Studio Pro license for Studio and Studio X. That means you can have a total of up to two instances of any of these Studio profiles put together. Basically, the total number of active Studios should not exceed two. For example, you can have one Studio and one Studio Pro or one studio and one studio X, or even two instances of the same profile. There is nothing you need to do here. Once you install the studio, you can choose whichever profile you want. Next, if I go to other services, you will see the licenses for AI robots and GPUs, which is zero at the moment because they are not included in the free community edition. These are part of UiPath's AI Fabric, which is a service that allows you to deploy and manage machine learning models for the robots to consume. Again, this is a much advanced topic and is not covered in this course. And we'll take a look at these four tabs in the later videos. For now, let's go ahead and install Studio. So I'll click this button, Download Studio slash Studio X, and it'll start the download. In the meanwhile, let's take a look at the system requirements for UiPath Studio and Robot. Go to the URL docs.uipath.com slash installation and upgrade. Now here you can see the installation and upgrade documentation links for all the UiPath products. But we are going to focus only on Studio and Robot for now. And later when we install the enterprise trial version of Orchestrator, we'll go through the system requirements for Orchestrator. So if I go to the hardware and software requirements for Studio, you can see the minimum and recommended hardware requirements and the minimum screen resolution you need. Then you have the list of operating systems that are supported and you can see that it can be installed on both client and server Windows versions as long as these requirements are met. Another great thing about UiPath is that Studio and Robot are compatible with Citrix, which means in large organizations, you really don't have to install Studio on the user's computer. Rather, it can be published as a Citrix app. And then you need .NET Framework 4.6.1 or greater. And if you're using Windows in a language other than English, you need to install the corresponding language pack for the .NET Framework version you're using. These are the browsers supported by UiPath for browser automation. For Chrome, Firefox, and Edge, you need to install the appropriate extensions. And I'll show you how to do that in the next video. Finally, if you're using Studio X, you need one of these MS Office packages.
Now if we go to the system requirements for UiPath robot, you can see that it is exactly the same as UiPath Studio. All right, so the setup file for UiPath Studio is successfully downloaded. So let's double click to start the installation. And here it will ask you to sign in. You can sign in now or if you actually click the drop down, you can choose to skip the sign in process. But then you need to manually enter the orchestrator URL and machine key to license the studio or add the license key manually. But for now, I'll go ahead and click sign in. And you will get this pop up from Google Chrome asking if I want to open UiPath. I'll check this option, always allow cloud.uipath.com to open links of this type in the associated app and click open UiPath. It'll ask you to select a tenant, but since this is a community edition, you only have one tenant, which is the default tenant, and it'll auto select that anyway. We will discuss tenants in detail later when we get to orchestrator. All right, so the installation is completed successfully and it gives a pop-up for a quick tutorial. We'll close that for now because I'm going to walk you through the user interface of Studio and the various options in the next video. And we will also build our first automation process. All right, so stay tuned.